Hello, my name is Georgina Bridal. I work for Cornwall Music Service Trust and I deliver the lead engagement contract for the hub. In this role, I travel around all the primary schools in North Cornwall and deliver bespoke projects within the classroom. I advise on instrumental learning and I also help with teachers CPD. Today I'm going to show you how I present rhythmic notation to children from Key Stage 1 through to Year 6. First of all, we're going to discuss um, some vocabulary so that you know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking the first piece of vocabulary that we all need to understand is the word beat or pulse as it's often called in music. Pulse is quite a useful term because it means that the music has a heartbeat and this heartbeat goes on predictably throughout the music so you know where the next beat is going to come. It's a bit like a heartbeat, a physical heartbeat, because if the music is more active and more lively then you'll have a faster pulse and if the music is calmer, more subdued, you'll have a slower pulse. Within music, the pulse can change. It can speed up or slow down, but it will still feel predictable. You'll know where the next one's coming. The next piece of vocabulary is a little bit more complex. It's called the meter. And the meter of music is how that beat is divided up into strong stresses and weaker stresses. So when you look at the time signature of a piece of music, the top number is what we call the meter. So you can have two time, for example, one, two, one, two, one, two. You can have three time, as in a waltz, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can have four time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can have other meters as well, but they're the main ones for key stage one and key stage two. Um, the tempo, we've already talked a little bit about tempo um, when we talked about speed. The tempo is the speed at which the beat occurs. So we tend to talk about beats per minute, just like we would with a heartbeat. The higher the number, the faster the tempo. Finally, our topic today, rhythm. Rhythm is a little bit difficult to describe. It's also quite difficult to spell. I usually have a bit of a problem with it. Um, so rhythm, I like to describe it as the way that the music moves within the pulse. It's not predictable. With tunes that you know, you might be able to clap the rhythm. With songs, you might be able to clap the rhythm of the words. But if it's a new piece of music, you don't know what's coming next. You know where the ne next beat arrives, but you don't know what will happen within that beat. So that's the rhythm. It, I think another easy way of looking at it is the way that words land in a song. Um, but obviously not all music is vocal music, so we have to be able to extend that. The first stage of activities is oral presentation. Just like re reading and writing, the first stage of reading and writing is spoken language. In music, the first stage is hearing what we want to produce. So I'm going to use a song to present um, rhythm orally. Here's the song. Concentration, concentration, navigation, feet to the rhythm, here we go. It's a very, very simple song. Some children they should be able to do the clapping, I think, but they might have difficulty with the clicking. So if they have difficulty with the clicking, I just tell them to pretend that they're clicking. It is something that they like to practice at home so that they can come back the next week and say that they can do it. I've used this activity with um, year one pupils and it's been very successful. So the next stage of the activity, once they can sing the song and do the actions with the song, the next stage is to actually use the end of the song to present a rhythm to the children, which they will then echo back. Concentration, concentration, navigation, keep to the rhythm, here we go. 
then they will echo that back. So you can present any rhythm that you like at the end of the song. Once the children are really, really familiar with the song and the rhythmic activity and echoing that back, which might take a couple of weeks, then you can invite children up to take the role of the teacher and present a rhythm at the end of the song. We're working towards them being able to try and feel that four beats within the song so they know how long to fill with their rhythm. They won't get this immediately, but it doesn't need to be commented on. You just let it be. Just like you would with reception children, you follow where they're at, okay? And it gives them an opportunity to improvise. And music can be very, very free, so it doesn't matter if their rhythm doesn't fill those four beats. You may have noticed when I clapped the rhythm um, in concentration navigation that I used different ways of making the sound. So I clapped and I also used my thighs for the quicker rhythm. And this is one of the things that I established with the children quite early on. Rhythm is something that is fairly easy for us to feel with our bodies. It's quite a natural response for most people once we've got a pulse. Um, but actually producing those rhythms can be a little bit more complicated because you have to coordinate your body. You have to know how long each element lasts. Okay, so what I do is I use particular physical movements to represent the rhythm. I call this physical presentation. By doing this, each element, each rhythmic element has a very definite length and the children can feel how long that's going to last and then they can present it in the same way. The different rhythmic elements that I use with Key Stage 1 children and Key Stage 2 children, progressing in complexity as the children are older or more experienced, the first one is the crotchet which is just the straight clap and that actually is on the beat so it's the same as the pulse in this case. Then I present a pair of quavers and I use thigh thigh for this and so that the children actually get the physicality of it, I make sure that they say the words at the same time. So a pair of crotchets and two pairs of quavers would look like this. Clap, clap, thigh thigh, thigh thigh. And you can rearrange those in any order. You can do lots of different rhythmic uh, games um, echoing is a really good one, children can make up their own rhythms, but just keep the number of elements very narrow to begin with so that the children can really get a grasp of them. You can use a single quaver as well with more advanced children, but this is a little bit tricky and you have to make sure it's with something else. So one combination that I like, which lasts across two beats in entirety, is thigh clap thigh. So if I was going to put that into a rhythmic sequence, it would be something like thigh clap, thigh clap, clap. That's quite a nice rhythm. It's a syncopated rhythm, um, which we won't talk about, but some of you might already know about. It just gives music an extra bounce, and so it's a bit more interesting for the older children. Um, another rhythmic element that I use with Key Stage 2 is the minim. This is a two-beat note. It makes one sound across two beats. So I use a clap slide and that indicates that the note's going to be held on. I find it more effective than clap bounce because they have trouble with this bounce. Um, but I have seen that used before. So clap slide. Um, some of the children, you just have to watch out because sometimes they go clap and then go into another clap before the slide. So it's clap, hold down and slide. Just make sure that they get the, the physicality of that. Um, and then also I use a crotchet rest, we sometimes need silence in music and these are called rests and I use a backwards clap for this, uh, I call it a backwards clap because it's the opposite direction to a clap and uh, obviously it makes no noise but there needs to be a definite amount of time that that rest lasts so by doing the physicality of it the children feel how long that should be. You can get them to go rest actually for that as well um, as they're doing the motion so they know how long it lasts for. And finally, if you get really good, you can use semi-quavers, which are really small notes. You get four of them to a crotchet beat and I use tickle-tickle for that. 
you might present the children with a rhythm that they have to echo back. So let's just do one. Let's do um, clap, 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 slide and then you can get the children to echo that back. You can take a lot of rhythms from your song as well. So uh, if you were using Drunken Sailor, what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Early in the morning. I would advise you strongly to practice anything that you're going to do like that before you do it, because uh, it's not as easy as I make it look. It took me a few goes. The next stage is visual presentation. So in this stage, we're actually going to look at how the notes are written down. And this uh, is really important because it frees children up to make up their own compositions and be able to remember them from week to week. I do advise that they've had lots of experience with the oral and the physical presentation before they go on to the visual presentation. Um, so I would probably start visual presentation in year three, but only with simple elements that they were really, really used to. So what I do is I put up four different rhythmic patterns. So on my uh, sheet, I'm using thigh, 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 and I'm using clap, 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 clap. So they're nice and simple. And then I might use a combination of claps and thigh thighs. So clap, thigh, 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 clap, and clap, thigh, 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 thigh. I don't use the words necessarily as I'm clapping. I might just present them without the words, or I might say the words, depending on what stage the children are at. So I present the four rhythmic patterns and then I actually clap them, but not in order. I get the children to work in pairs to work out which one's which, but I don't ask them for feedback. I listen in to what they're saying to each other. I do tell them that they have to explain to each other why it might be the particular visual rep representation that they've chosen. This is a really telling activity, but I don't want to put any child on the spot and I don't want children to feel like they're making mistakes. And that's why I don't ask for feedback. So what happens next is um, I, I don't even reveal sometimes which one is which at the end, depending on how they're doing. Because again, I don't want to reinforce mistakes. So what I do next is I put up another rhythmic pattern that is based on the elements that we've explored through the activity. So it might be clap, thigh, thigh, clap, thigh, thigh. I don't present it orally to them. I say to them, after four, let's see if we can all clap this rhythm here. And then they clap it back. And it's really, really surprising. The majority of the class get it right. And if the others don't, they do become aware of it. And over time, they address their own misconceptions um, much better than me trying to tell them that they're wrong and uh, trying to correct it. So once they've learned all of these things, the final stage is actually extending the learning. You can do this with the children with the limited elements that they have learned at any stage in the process. So you can do it with uh, key stage one children, maybe in year two, and you can do it with year six children with more complex elements. So it's an activity that they can, um, they, you can use throughout the school. I give them the rhythmic elements that I want them to work with. So I've got some here for you, crotchet, quaver, semi-quaver, crotchet, rest, and minim. And I make sure, first of all, that they're really happy with how those work and that they can do the physical representation. So I present them with a row of four boxes labelled at the top, one, two, three, four. And I tell them that they can fill those boxes with the rhythmic elements. You have to be really careful because if you're using a minimum, obviously that's going to go across two boxes because it's worth two beats. We explore how much each of the rhythmic elements is worth and they make sure that their total 
adds up to four at the end. And then they present their rhythms to the class. When you've done that, you can actually use these rhythmic patterns with some notes on a xylophone to make up a tune. And then that can be part of their composition. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this beneficial. Please do contact me if you have any questions or if you would like me to come to your school to do a project.